Hello. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay, great. I see that you can all hear me. Uh, good, we're getting a bunch of people. Um, let's go to the keynote file for today. Um, And let's get going. Uh, Anna and uh, Anna and Yaz, can you see the uh, the screen with the uh, yeah. entryway? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin, we'll talk about homework nineteen in just a few minutes. Let me put my Zoom chat window over here. Okay, uh, just so you know, this is the last session uh, for this semester. And if, if we hadn't had the, uh, um, the coronavirus shutdown, then this would be our last class meeting at 1.30. Uh, so, uh, and we're gonna go through several concepts uh, today. I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, the mega review uh, that's coming up. Uh, we'll take a look at the final exam, or, or talk about it anyways. Um, and uh, all the regular homework is due on uh, April, uh, April 6th. That's not right. All the regular homework is due. Uh, the, that should be April uh, 19th at 11.59. So, Caitlin, that's the answer to your question. Uh, the regular homework is due the night before the final, which is the 21st. And then the bonus mega review is due that morning. So let's go through some of that. Uh, the last thing we'll do is calculate the wavelength of a uh, neutron, a moving neutron, uh, the way that we do it in four, four homework 19. So let's get to it. Okay, first of all, the mega review. If you if you look at the mega review, you'll see that it's due on uh, twenty uh, Tuesday, to April twenty first at seven fifty nine. So right before the exam comes available. Okay, and I want you to, and then then I'll convert it into, you know, up to four bonus points. So I think it's I don't know thirty three points total, and then I'll streamline that down or scale it down to one, two, three, or four points. So if you know that you're on the borderline and you want to crush the borderline, uh, definitely uh, do the uh, bonus review, the mega review. Uh, you have several attempts at it. Use it as a study tool and uh, so that you can, um, you know, really crush uh, the final, All right? Now, let me pause for questions about that. Uh, okay. I guess nobody has a question. Uh, and, you know, and, oh, Antonio, yeah, the mega review is optional, but you should do it. It's a good study tool. It'll get you ready for the final. It cannot hurt you. It can only help your grade. 
so give it a shot. Use it, you know, because, you know, it's it, if you've studied and, and thought about the mega review, um, you'll be happy when you get to the final. It's You're not going to have the repeat of the mega review, but there's going to be enough concepts discussed in one way in the mega review that will help you tackle concepts on the exam itself. So definitely do it. All right. Um, but yeah, it is optional. And, uh, it, and therefore, it doesn't hurt your grade. If you, if you don't do it, it doesn't hurt your grade. But the other two homework assignments, yeah, we definitely want to get those in the night before. All right. Now, uh, let's keep going. Um, I want to talk about the schedule for the final. And I just want to make sure this is clear as a bell for everybody. Okay, so it's going to become available at 8 a.m. next Tuesday. So that's just a few days away. And uh, for you newbie freshmen, do not study all night Monday night before my exam. Now, you don't have to take it at 8 a.m. You, you only have to have it submitted by 11.59 p.m. So it's about 14 hours of availability. You'll get 170 minutes uh, for the exam. Um, and so it's a 100-point test, double the size of a midterm. So think midterm exam three multiplied by two for the number of multiple choice and calculations and stuff. But unlike the midterm, you get a 170 minutes. That's two hours and 50 minutes. Now, if we were in the lecture hall and given the uh, final exam, uh, with Scantron and iClicker, uh, that's what you'd have. You'd have, you know, I think ours starts at 1 and we would go to 350, right? Uh, being online, I give you the same amount of time, but I let you start earlier in the day, so a little bit of flexibility, and I hope that is helpful. Is it? Is anybody thinking I'm going to do it early in the day? Just curious. Go ahead and type in a yes or a no. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, so knock it out of the park early, and your exam will be graded like of the midterm. 11-ish uh, is good. And, you know, the thing is, I want to go over that right now. Uh, you choose your own time to start. So this clock over here, let's take a look at it. If, if you want to start right at 8 a.m., okay, that would be this block of time right here from eight o'clock till 10.50, all right? So just almost 11 a.m., all right? But you don't have to start at 8 a.m. You can start anytime. Uh, let's say that you wanna start at 11.30. All right, that'd be right up here, all right? From 11.30 till 2.20. That's good, you know? So that may fit in your schedule a little bit better. Uh, Andrew, I'll get to your question in just a second. Uh, let's say you want to start in the afternoon because you're going to stay up late and then sleep until eight in the morning. And then you got one exam in the morning and you, you're going to tackle this one at 2.20. That's all right. Just slide it down here. You'll go till 10 after five. Okay. So, so yeah, it's good. Now the, the latest that you can go, I calculated it out is 9.09 PM if you want all 170 minutes. And what that will do is um, bring your exam, you'll be able to submit the exam right at the buzzer, 11.59 p.m. Uh, on Monday evening, or Tuesday evening. So uh, that's how that's gonna work. Now, Andrew, you had a question. Would you be willing to give us an idea of how many math questions there will be? And would you be willing to tell us if the math questions and brain burners are at the end or the beginning? So we can't, so we can play how much time we need. Yes. Uh, we should have, uh, in terms of calculation problems, where you type in the answer, you know, I tell you, okay, give me an answer to the nearest 0 0.01 meters or something like that. And then you figure it out, you type it in. You'll have five or six of those uh, of various degrees of difficulty. You know, you may be really good on thermal equilibrium, 
So if there's a thermal equilibrium temperature calculation, you'll be able to crush that in no time. Uh, but other people might find that to be challenging, but yet a stopping distance problem they might feel is, is really easy. So whichever one is a brain, you know, everybody's going to think, well, this one is a brain burner and, or that one is a brain burner. So everybody's going to have a different opinion about which ones are brain burners. Uh, but something like that is, is going to be righteous now, or that's going to be in the plan. Andrew, they'll always be at the very end of the, um, examination that's my traditional spacing all right we're not going to have a bonus uh question in a little separate uh sub final okay so it's going to be a hundred points and that's it all right and um uh, and the calculations the major calculations will be um at the end. Now, you may have some simple calculations as multiple choice questions. You know, like uh, how far does um, does uh, a box of donuts fall in one second of free fall if you drop it from rest? You know, so that one's a drop distance calculation. Pretty easy. Uh, so I sometimes put, you know, cinchy ones like that in multiple choice where you have the true answer and then you have three or four incorrect answers and you've got to just, you know, you got to do the calculation and then, and then choose one, choose the right answer. So uh, you might have um, two or three of those uh, cinchy ones, but most of the, mo most of the uh, other questions in multiple choice will be concepts, uh, true, false. Uh, there'll be some formula matching as usual. And all the formulas that you will need for the calculations. Uh, and then that's how, that's how, how that'll go. All right. Does that answer your question, uh, Andrew? What do you think? All right. You're welcome. All right. Now, uh, as I said, it's going to be a hundred points and there'll be formula matching, maybe some concept matching too, you know, cause I throw the, I like to throw those in once in a while, multiple choice, and a few calculations, as I just mentioned to Andrew, all right? Um, uh, yes, Andrew, uh, like the last exam, we will, you will be able, it'll be one at a time, but you'll be able to go back from number seven to number six, or from number 32 back to number 25. So, so that's good. And, uh, and just so you remember, it's cumulative. So everything that we started talking about in January um, and all the way up to uh, today, really. Uh, the other thing is it's mandatory. So you have got to make it. You've got a 14-hour window. Now, if, if we weren't on shutdown, you'd be, you know, you'd be under the gun for getting to the final uh, at 1 o'clock. Um, and so I make no uh, excuses and there will be no exceptions. You've got to make it. That's it. And so make sure you're at a place where you have good internet uh, and you'd be able to take it for three hours approximately. And, and uh, you know, you should have already thought this through. Hopefully nobody is planning to fly. Well, I guess not many people are flying now. Usually most semesters, it's a problem. You know, students, oh, I got plane tickets, you know, or, you know, or my, my parents are coming down to pick me up or whatever. And I don't make any exceptions. I'm a real SOB when it comes to exam schedule. Uh, SOB, son of a Brickner. So, uh, so it can't be dropped. If you drop it, if you miss it, uh, a year in a world of hurt. It's just going to toast your grade. Now, most everybody's got uh, a C or higher in this class. Everybody that's been taking exams and doing homework, you're, you're looking pretty good. You either got a C or higher. Uh, but if you, if you miss the final, the final's a big chunk of money. Uh, if, you, if you blow that, then you're, you're going to be suffering. All right? It'll bring your letter grade down at least one, one notch, maybe two. So I'll definitely do that. Now, any other questions about 
about the final. And you can ask more questions and discussions, you know, over the weekend if, if something comes to your mind. Okay, I see nobody is uh, coming up with a question. So uh, that's good. Um, will we, when will we know your, your, you mean your semester grade, Eliza? Um, your semester grade, you'll be able to figure out as soon as you see your final exam. Pretty much, I haven't I haven't updated the homework points. That's the only thing that's going to be changing uh, between that. Well, plus you've got the mega review bonus, and I think you got a. So you got the mega review bonus, so that's not on the books yet. And then the last couple homework assignments, uh, eighteen and nineteen, those aren't on the books yet. Uh, but you know you'll know those by the time you finish the um by the time you finish the final so you'll be able to you know mentally calculate um as soon as you finish your final and then go to the syllabus that i handed out at the beginning of the semester and just look up your points on the grade scale there because then we'll have all 250 points on the books so you should know fairly soon but for me i'll have to wait till everybody takes the final and then uh and I'll have to crunch all the numbers and stuff. Uh, but you will be able to mentally work out the arithmetic. It's not that hard. All right, Eliza, is that, is, is that a good question? Is that a good answer for you? Okay, great. Um, now, uh, Yasmin, do you have any comments that you want to inject? No, I'm just letting, just to let everyone know that I will send out an announcement tomorrow, I guess, with more information, you know, all the links to everything. Yeah. Uh, did you like my uh, announcement and discussions posting? Yes, that okay? was good. Yeah. All right. All right, you Thank guys. You. So, so be aware, uh, that's going to be Monday uh, with Yasmin uh, in Zoom and... Uh, So, uh, so hopefully you'll be able to uh, get your get your ducks in a row, as they say, and crush the final exam. Andrew, yeah, thanks. Uh, that's nice that you say uh, you're you're happy about extra points, extra credits, and bonus points activities. Yeah, it's normal. You know, it's it's good. I normally have, you know, not a whole lot, but you know, just a few, and that's usually what people need. You know. I know some people would like to have, oh, can I have a 50 point extra credit worksheet or something like that? Uh, and that usually comes from students that haven't done much homework. And so they're hurting for that reason. But uh, normally I just have a few bonus points in there. So, all right, let's keep going with the uh, calculations and stuff. Uh, let's do the uh, wavelength of a neutron. Um, uh, and the, the mass of the neutron is a little bit greater than the mass of a proton, just a little bit. It's 1.675 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Um, so that's a few parts per thousand uh, larger. Uh, and let's just say that it's going at uh, 200 miles per second, or 200 meters per second. So that's, that's about as fast as a jet goes, you know, or a, or a real fast plane. Uh, so it's about, I don't know, it's about 450 miles an hour, something like that. All right, so let's see we have a neutron. We can produce neutrons at that speed. It's, it's not uh, difficult. So let's figure out the wavelength. Now, over here on the left in this first equation block, that's uh, the de Broglie relation. Planck's constant in the numerator and then the momentum P in the denominator. Now, what we're going to do with the information given, we have to calculate the momentum. So uh, you can think of it as H uh, in the numerator, Planck's constant, and uh, MV, because P is equal to MV in the uh, denominator. So let's plug in what we know. All right. 
And uh, so in the numerator, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 um, kilogram meters squared per second. That's units of uh, angular momentum. And in the denominator, uh, 1.675 times 10 to the minus 27 uh, kilograms. That's the mass of the neutron. And then the speed is 200 meters per second. Okay, so that's your plug-in values. Now, I didn't do any canceling on this slide, but you can mentally cancel. Uh, what can you cancel on this uh, in this equation? In this third, in the middle of the third equation block. Look at it carefully. What can you cancel? Uh, meters per second. Yeah, and then the numerator will still have a unit of meters. What else can you cancel? There's one, right, kilograms. Uh, so what that means is uh, you're going to have meters in the denominator. And this, this last part of the second equation block, that's how you would type it in uh, on a calculator. All right, so let's, let me uh, stop sharing this and uh, let me show you how that would go on a calculator, All right? And so I'll stop sharing this. And uh, let, me, let me share the calculator, okay? So here's the calculator. Let me bring it down a little bit here. All right, can you guys uh, see the uh, the calculator? Uh, uh, I can't see the, uh, oh wait a minute, here it is. Uh, let's see, where's the chat? Yes, we can see it. Okay, good. All right, so, um, so 6.63, um, and then EE, and then 27, and then enter the, change it to minus 27. Okay, so that's the numerator. Then we divide it by, um, let's see, let me use the parentheses. Uh, one, oh, that's wrong, All right, that's wrong. No, oh, oh, none of you guys caught that. Dr. B making a, an error. Uh, let's do that again. Uh, 6.63 EE 34 minus, not 27 minus. All right, so that's my, my numerator, Planck's constant. Now we're divided by the momentum. So let's go um, 200 meters per second times the mass of the proton, 1.675. And here again, you enter exponent. And this one's uh, 27. This one's the negative 27. All right, so there's my denominator. Um, and it, it calculates itself uh, 3.35 times 10 to the 29. Uh, and so uh, that's wrong. Let me do this. Dude, let me do this again. I think I messed up 6.63. So this is good. You guys see how it works for me using these uh, Dipsy calculators. Okay, 34 negative divided by parentheses 200 times 1.675. Enter exponent 27 negatory. Close. There, yeah, that looks better. Okay, so I have, um, so now I just hit the equal sign. Ooh. Uh, you know what? My, my PowerPoint is, anybody verify me on that? Anybody? 
Anybody got a 1.979 on that calculation? Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, nobody verifies. Anybody trying it? Okay. Uh, okay, good. Good, Sophia. Uh, so uh, that's going to be a certain fraction of a meter. So that's that's a really small fraction of a meter, all right? So what I like to do to convert it into nanometers, you know, that's a, that's point oh 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 one nine seven nine. Okay. And so um, to convert that into a number of nanometers, you divide by one times 10 to the minus nine. So one EE negative nine. Okay, and so that's the number of nanometers that you have, all right? And so the answer here uh, would be uh, 1.979 nanometers, all right? Uh, oops, 1.979. Nanometers, that's better. Ooh, that doesn't look right, Kate. Uh, yeah, uh, let's take a look back at the, um, let's take a look uh, back at the calculation. Anyways, this is how you would do it on a calculator. And just be careful when you're doing this on a calculator. Now, let me go and, uh, Stop sharing that, and let me just go back here. Uh, okay. Uh, let me share the keynote file. Okay. And can you see the calculation? Uh, you guys? Okay, great. All right. So, uh, Katie, let's just go through it step by step. And uh, we've already done this part. So this is the one that I just did. Actually, I had this numerator here. Um, and uh, let me double check the chat window here. Uh, good, Andrew. I'm glad you verified it. So I did 6.63 EE minus. So what I did was I, I simplified minus 34 in the numerator, 10 to the minus 34, and 10 to the minus 27 in the denominator. And remember, 10 to the minus 27 in the denominator is like 10 to the regular 27 in the numerator. So that means you have a net of 10 to the minus 7 uh, in the numerator, and then you just put 1.675 and 200 in the denominator without any scientific notation. You've simplified it. Okay, so um, so if, if you do it that way, then you have 335 down here. Now what I did, I had 3.35 uh, times 10 to the minus 29, I think it was, something like that. Uh, no, that wasn't right. Whatever, whatever I had uh, in my, in my uh, actually, let me, I can't, I can't look at it right now. Anyway, so it works out to uh, 1.979 times 10 to the minus 9. All right. So uh, remember, if you're if you're doing this on a calculator, um, and if you, you you know you should practice. You 
you have to use scientific notation on your calculator for this, pro this kind of a problem. Uh, and you can see how tricky it is. You know, normally I don't write it out um, in this manner, but I felt like, okay, let me show the students how to do it on a calculator. So, uh, so that's what I did. Okay, so we have meters, and we have 10 minus 7 in the numerator. That's this EE minus 7. And we still have the 6.63, and down below we still have 1.675, and we still have the 200. Okay, and you multiply those out, you get 335. And that works out to a little bit uh, less than uh, 2 uh, times 10 to the minus 9. Uh, meters. So that's, like I said, 1.979 uh, nanometers for the answer. Uh, so let me see if your question. Where did you get minus nine? Um, that comes out in the, uh, that comes out in the calculation. Um, let me do it, uh, Kate, uh, let me do it, let me go back to the calculator and I'll do this one up here, all right? Okay, so I'll put my EE minus seven in from the start, all right, instead of trying to do two scientific notations. All right, so let's try that. Uh, so let me share my calculator again. Handy dandy calculator, all right, let me clear it up. Uh, so 6.63, and uh, uh, EE seven negative, right? Divided by one point six seven five times two hundred. Okay. And now, oh, that's not right. I'm messing this up. Okay, let's do something different here. All right, let's do the denominator first. 1.675 times 200. Okay, so that denominator works out to 335. Good, I'm gonna put that in the memory. All right, now 6.63 EE27 negative, divide by memory. That's not right. Let's try it again, 6.63 EE7 negative, divided by, yeah, okay, that's right. Divided by memory equals, all right? So there's my answer, Kate, all right? Yeah, it's got a bunch of zeros out in front, but it's really nanometers. So it would be, so you would say, well, my answer is 000, 000, 000, 00001979 meters. But if you want it in nanometers, you just divide by one EE negative nine. And that'll give you the answer in nanometers. All right. Okay, never mind, Andrew, answered my question. Oh, so, so Andrew's the boss now. Very good. I see. Hmm. So that's the way it works out. Good. <laughs> okay, good, Katie. And, I'm, you know, and look, this thing, that's why I give you so many practice runs on this problem because um, it's, it's just tricky working with your calculator. And this one on my laptop, you know, it, the reason I'm, I kept screwing it up is because I hardly ever use it. I usually use my handheld calculator. Uh, so just get used to your calculator and, uh, and that'll be good. Now, uh, let's pause um, uh, for questions. Uh, if you have any other questions before we dismiss, it's 2.08, we're a little bit over. Uh, any other questions before we dismiss? And Anna, do you wanna say anything? I know you, you were, uh, inviting students to message you. Do you want to repeat that? Yeah, I mean, if, if anyone needs any help with any of the homework questions or maybe the bonus and you're doing math and you're not sure what's going on because clearly it can be uh, difficult on the simple calculator sometimes, uh, you can email me your math and I can review it with you or you can ask me any general questions through web courses. 
not email, but um, the inbox messaging system, yes. right? Yeah, the e-message system through WebCourse. Okay. Um, also, uh, Anna, what is your example? You know, maybe you don't want to say in front of everybody, but it, are you done with exams? Uh, no, I still have uh, two online, but they're online exams. They're not too time restricted, but they're going to be, it won't in, can interfere with anything. So they can email me whenever before the exam. So, so you can take the time with the students and still tackle your own exams. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Yasmin, how about you? Same. My exam. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay. So my, you're asking about my personal exams? Yeah, so your, yeah. your um, study union is Monday, and then ba basically you're done. But, I mean, is that, does that, what are the rest of your exams like? The rest of my exams all take place on Thursday and Friday. So I'll have that Monday to, like, um, all right. that Tuesday. All right. I mean, that Wednesday, and Tuesday and Wednesday to study. Okay, so that sounds good. All right. Uh, anybody else um, uh, have a question about our final? Okay, I guess. Uh, Nobody has any more questions, so let me just uh, uh, say see you later. I'll see you uh, on the internet, and um, I had a lot of fun uh, with you guys and getting to see you uh, develop your skills and your confidence. And I've had, even though we've had this coronavirus shutdown for the last few weeks, um, I've still enjoyed. Uh, uh, I, I've enjoyed every minute. I, I always enjoy the teaching you guys. So I just want to say um, that it's been fun and and mostly not an aggravation. Although sometimes on exam day, I'm pretty flustered with stress. But, but other than that, it's been a fun semester. So God bless you. I'll see you on the internet and, uh, and uh, crush my final. All right. And I hope everybody stays healthy for the duration. Okay. All right, I'll see you guys later. Good. All right. Thanks for all the kind words, you guys. Okay, let's dismiss the section. And uh, let me see, stop the recording.